Uh, let us start this lecture with a thought process from Rudolf Clausius, uh, who gave the thought process in 1851, who says in all cases where work is produced by heat, a quantity of heat proportional to work done is expanded and inversely by the expenditure of a like quantity of work, same amount of heat may be produced. So, if you look at what is the statement and what it will be, we will be discussing today in this class. However, let us recall as usual what we learned in the last lecture. If you uh, recapitulate that we started with the ideal gas law, which was very familiar with you and later on we move to Van der Waal equation of state, which can be applied for the real gases. We have also seen that that law is good enough for not only the gases, but also for the liquid, but however, it, it would not uh, predict well for the vapor and liquid mixtures. Later on we saw three uh, equation of state which can be applied for real gases, but there might be several of them, but we have only looked at three. Uh, one is the what we call Benedict uh, equation and uh, other is <coughs> the Redlich and Kong equation and another is uh, Rubin and wave equations kind of thing. We have seen those are basically semi empirical relationships, which are not having any theoretical basis. And later on we also discuss about virial equation, which is having uh, basis of theoretical you know background. And uh, unfortunately those coefficients like virial coefficients like uh, you can have higher order terms also, but the experimentally only the second order terms one can you know find out the coefficients, but later on. Uh, therefore, uh, it can be similar to an you know very simple form, but however, it may not be applied for uh, all the cases that is the limitation of course, there is more need to be work to be done for that obtaining the uh, virial coefficients for various gases and uh, various uh, what you call materials uh, and also uh, <coughs> this thing. Beside this another thing we did, we looked at compressibility factors. By using compressible factor in equation of state, you can take care of the real gases and we have seen that a, a generalized compressibility chart on which you know most of the uh, gases rather large number of gases can be uh, or the large number of substances not only gases substances can be plotted in single plot and we also uh, learnt how to use that you know um, compressibility factor and a chart for evaluating the properties. But today we will be uh, doing little uh, different that as I told in the very beginning we will be looking at what you call a various uh, relationship various quantities namely the heat and work and energy right uh, through which a system interacts with its surrounding right. But what are the relations between these things what we are going to discuss today because whenever a system undergoes a process right um, during its interaction with surrounding, then there will be some change in the energy and that change can be you know energy interaction can take place either by the heat or by the work. Now, uh, what is the relationship that can connect all these quantities that we are going to see. 
but I will just uh, give you a little bit historical perspective. If you look at till 1780, when the Cleghorn uh, gave a theory known as caloric theory, um, before that it was known uh, that about the conservation of energy for mechanical system. But however, people were not having much idea about what is heat, right. So, uh, and uh, Cleghorn is the first person to give a theory, which is caloric theory. According to this, the heat is like an el elastic fluid having no weight and it is conserved. That means, you know, you can this heat he is saying is conserved. And later on, the Lavoisier in 17 around 87, he also uh, you might be knowing Lavoisier is a, one of the uh, you know get a scientist. So, he also um, told that look this heat whatever you call it can be termed as a calorie. And uh, that theory was very much uh, you know uh, being used and experimented by various people. People felt look this are and number of uh, you know work are being were being reported at that time. And it remains for a very longer period of time till uh, you know like Joule come into picture J P Joule. Of course, before that there was a uh, what you call uh, uh, Thomson who uh, gave a, who happens to be a, a superintendent in the military in German Munich, right. And while he was uh, reboring the gun, you know, he found out that this mechanical energy, you know, is converted into. You might be knowing earlier days, even in India, we are having very big barrel guns, you know, and then you will have to put this uh, kind of board, the pow, uh, what to call gunpowder and other thing and then bore it. And while mechanical work is converted into it, then he says that look, it cannot be uh, you know true that what uh, caloric theory is talking about. And of course, he uh, with a lot of his influence with uh, what you call uh, in Royal Society, at that time Royal Society was a very big thing I mean, in the sense scientific body. And he tried to conduct experiment and also told like look, this is not right and uh, the mechanical war can be converted into heat, right. He gave that idea, but nobody really took his idea for quite a bit, maybe around 50 years kind of thing. And later on the J P Joule, who was a very young person like you, like um, around 20 years old at that time, he conducted series of experiment, right. And he was not educated. Uh, in a formal education system. And of course, he was being tutored by a very great uh, person known as uh, you know Humphrey Devi, you might be knowing. But he conducted series of experiment, you know like the caloric theory was established, but he demolished it by conducting series of experiments and, uh, and related this work and heat which is against the caloric theory, right. Uh, and what he did, he basically took a, a what you call container, in which there will be some kind amount of water or fluid he took, right. And then he insulated this uh, thing and put a this paddle wheel. And paddle wheel can be rotated, and which is connected to pulley and this mass, and mass can be, you know, uh, basically uh, can be lowered against the gravitational field, right? <coughs> and what will happen if I take this as my system, you know, dashed line I have put? Then what will happen? No heat is being transferred here, right? No heat being transferred here. And work be being done or not, work is done on the system by the this paddle wheel, right. And what will happen to the this water? Suppose it is at ambient temperature to start with and before the you know uh, movement of this paddle wheel, then what will happen to its temperature? 
temperature will definitely will increase right. And means this temperature is increased that means the work whatever being uh, you know put into the system by the paddle wheel right has been converted into heat you can think of that way right. Okay. Uh, and of course, uh, one can evaluate how much it is there and then uh, by the work done potential energy that is mass into gravity into change in the elevation or the height right and then one can evaluate. If you look at this process can be described in this you know like uh, 1 to 2 let us say system as a at a station 1 and due to this work done it has gone to station 2. Okay. Now, what he did he now remove this insulation as a result right it can pass through this it can go out of this I mean all the side then what will happen temperature will be coming back to the ambient temperature whenever it will attain the thermal equilibrium right. So, the process can come from state 2 state 1 right. So, if you look at that means the process started a station state 1 and it uh, some work is being done and then some heat interaction is taking place and coming back to the state 1 again and this process we call it as a cyclic process right right and uh, therefore we can define a cyclic process as a process or a combination of process of course in this case we are considering only one but there might be several processes which we will see in whenever we are discussing about uh, practical cycles like your auto cycle diesel cycles or rank end cycles right by which a system returns back to its initial state we call it as a cycle. And he also conducted several other experiment I will be discussing uh, one of them more like uh, what he did actually he uh, took another system like you know a system is same, but instead of uh, instead of what you call the paddle wheel he put a resistance here and connected to a battery. And when this uh, switch is on then what will happen the current will flow through and heat it the water and then temperature will go up right. You can call this as a heat interaction you can call it as a work interaction we have already seen right. And that is equal to w we can say because we have taken the full you know um, the system boundary I have shown here it is including the heater therefore, it will be work interaction right. If I exclude the heater from the system then it can be heat interaction we have already discussed that earlier. So, this work is basically what you call E i and t where E is the emf i is the current and t is the time. So, certain amount of heat and system again moves uh, what you call state 1 to the state 2. And again when the you remove these insulations right what will happen because temperature has gone up due to the heat uh, due to the work done by this electrical heater on this the temperature of the system will go from ambient to certain temperature right it will be higher. And then when it will remove this insulation right I will remove this insulation and allow the heat to pass through this such that and uh, the temperature of the system will lower down it will be lower down till it attains the thermal equilibrium that means it will be reaching back the ambient temperature if it is started from the ambient temperature right. And then you can trace the path like a cycle the way we did that means you know it is a similar in nature that what uh, he observed he did several of experiments and concluded you know uh, and formulated the first law of thermodynamics 
uh, he conducted series of experiment as I told 1843 to 1850, 7 years he took to this experiment which looks to be quite simple you know. You can say look why cannot he do in 4 or 5 days or maybe 1 month not you know uh, something 7 years. And Joule concluded that net work done on a system is always proportional to the heat interaction irrespective of the type of work interaction, because two type of work I have just now illustrated here or discussed here, but there might be several other work kind of work right. And the rate of work done, he also varied this work like let us say few uh, you know what you call kilo joule let us say or I will say 5 kilo joule, I can say 50 kilo joule, I can say 500 kilo joule you know like I can change that. And method, method of converting work into thermal energy, he did all these experiments and concluded that. And then in other words, if a system involves number of work and heat interaction, then we can have that cyclic integral of the work is proportional to cycle integral of the heat interaction and which is not which is equal to you know uh, cycle integral d w is equal to j cycle in heat interaction uh, e integral of the heat j, j is your a constant. And in SI unit the j is uh, basically equal to 1 and this we call it as a joules constant. And this is the basically first law of thermodynamics. Okay. Is it you people are aware about this? What you know, you know as a first law of thermodynamics proposed by this thing is different than this, okay. but how I mean uh, it can be utilized this first law of thermodynamics we will see later on. So, if you look at this is the uh, equation and this is the first law of thermodynamics right that we say the cycle integral of heat is equal to cycle integral of the work. Keep in mind this thing is valid, this expression is basically valid for SI unit, otherwise the J should come into picture. Okay. In case of uh, SI unit J is equal to 1, but in FPS unit it will be different. So, what it state? The it states that is the first law of thermodynamics whenever a system undergoes cyclic change. However, the complex the cycle may be the cycle integral work is equal to the cycle integral of the heat rather I would put this way little bit differently which is the you know first law of thermodynamics that is whenever sister system undergoes a cyclic change. However, the complex cycle may be the cycle integral of work is proportional to the cycle integral of the heat right, because the j the constant is comes into picture that one can say also. So, this was firstly proposed by the great scientist J P Joule in 1851, do not think that he was the only person who was working. There was another person let me tell you a little historical perspective his name is Mayer and uh, he also working on this, but he could not propose this statement very with argument. He was having similar concept, but he was not having you know enough uh, arguments and also the evidence, because what happened he was also conducting experiment, but his son or the I think one of his uh, you know child died and then you know he could not really manage well, but later on uh, you know he was very frustrated. He also tried to commit suicide, but uh, he could recover and then he was also considered as a you know um, proposer of this first law of thermodynamics. Credit was given to him much later you know not uh, at that time he was having lot of agonies he worked so hard, but however it was not recognized. <coughs> so, uh, and there might be several other people who might be working you know on this to that. So, the first law of thermodynamics is a generalization of several experimental data right. Till date nobody has proved it to be wrong right. 
but however this law cannot be proved like a theorem what you do in mathematics and other things right it is on experimental basis there is no you know fundamental like where you will look at it and work on it see it is the other way around but however uh, people do uh, you know even today might be trying to prove that this is wrong you know so therefore there is always we always you know challenge the established concept and then go beyond it so that is the very important point you should keep in mind that don't uh, accept uh, the thing what it is but however if it is true we'll have to accept it so <coughs> therefore we can write it down as the cycle integral of the uh, del q that is the heat interaction minus the cycle integral of work is equal to 0 this is just I am putting over here you know and this heat from the system right in this case and this is work done on the system it can be just opposite also. So, uh, what we will uh, do that we will have to look at the sign convention again because uh, you know uh, that is the work done by the system is basically positive work done on the system by its surrounding right will be negative and heat entering into the system right from its surrounding is positive and heat is going out of the system you know uh, to its surrounding is basically negative and this you will be using I can use just opposite of that you know and also can manage and apply this first law of thermodynamic as well without any error, but one has to be consistent with that. So, what are the consequence of first law of thermodynamics that we will see right. So, uh, whether we can say it is a heat is a fourth function from the first law of thermodynamics or not that we will see for that what we will do we will say that let us consider a cyclic process like from the system he, uh, from the state 1 is moving through the path A and also returning back from state 2 through the path B. This is one way of you know it is completing one cycle right. I can apply the first law of thermodynamic for the cycle 1 A 2 B 1 and I can also apply the first law of thermodynamic from state 1 A 2 and take another path from state 2. Uh, through C you know to state 1 right I can have yes or no I can apply the first law of thermodynamics uh, for both the cycle between two state point between the two points. So, applying the first law of uh, thermodynamics to the cyclic process 1 A to B 1 that is here 1 A to B 1 what will do we can write it down that is uh, delta q 1 a 2 plus delta uh, q 2 b 1 that is integral we are saying right in this path is equal to the uh, cycle integral of the work I am like in the total and if you look at it consider two path the work done in the path 1 a 2 the d w and work done in the part 2 b 1 right. We are considering now this uh, what you call path 1 a 2 b 1. Similarly, we can also write down or uh, rather uh, apply the first law of thermodynamic to the uh, another cycle, but between the two state that is 1 a 2 c 1. right. So, uh, that is the you know if you look at this term is same as that of that that is the for path a 1 2 and of course, the heat this path 2 c 1 is different if you compare the equation 1 and equation 2 and work done also is basically d w uh, you know path 1 a 2 1 1 a 2 here both are same and these are two are different. 
and what we will do we will basically uh, subtract this equation 2 from the equation 1 and if I do that uh, what will happen this will cancel it out because I am minus you know I, I can put a minus here I am just subtracting. So, this will cancel it out similarly I will put a minus here and this will cancel it out I will get uh, you know uh, d q for the path 2 b 1 minus d q for the path 2 c uh, 1 is equal to d w minus uh, for the path 2 b 1 minus d w 2 c 1. So, uh, from this we can uh, I mean deduct we can deduce it right that uh, what is that thing let us look at what happens to work is a work done per path to be 1 uh, will it be equal to the work done part 2 c 1 is it possible no because if you look at if I take this diagram the path you know the area you know for one case area will be this one right this area for path to be 1 for path 2 c 1 there is another area you know added. So, it is not same. So, it is different. So, if it is different that means we can say that this the work done in the part 2 b 1 minus work done in the part 2 c 1 is not equal to 0. That means, the work done in the both the path are different I have already told you. Then we can from this we can say that that d q because this is not equal to you know uh, this portion is not equal to you know 0 right. So, therefore, the work done uh, uh, the heat interaction between the part 2 b 1 minus the heat interaction part 2 c 1 is not equal to 0. That means, what be, because it is between the two state 2 and 1 state is same. I mean like it is for, for both the path. Therefore, from this we can say that the heat interaction for the path 2 b 1 is not equal to the heat interaction between path 2 c 1. Therefore, we can call it basically heat interaction is not a point function rather it will be dependent on the path. Hence, as it is not a point function it cannot be a property of the system that we have already earlier discussed, but now using the first law of thermodynamics we can prove or you can deduce that look it cannot be a uh, what to call a point function or a property of the system rather it is a path function. So, uh, now let us uh, look at another aspect of that. So, um, uh, before uh, doing that like we need to know that in most engineering application non cyclic processes are encountered very often right. What we have derived till now is basically the first law of thermodynamic for a cyclic process right. If the process is not cyclic then you know you cannot really use it, but as the uh, engineering application processes need not to be cyclic right. For example, you know in the uh, what you call a system let us say there is a uh, what you call cylinder gas cylinder and it is being leaked out right. Can I get it back to the original? So, it, it needs to be put the work into that it is not cyclic. However, there are several cyclic process also as I told like your uh, automobile engines right it is cyclic it is move go on you know working uh, you know and then giving heat and other things it is doing. So, now we need to see how we can apply the first law of thermodynamic which we have uh, you know uh, discussed just now mean for the cyclic process can be extended for a non cyclic process. For that uh, we will have to uh, use the same equation that is uh, for the you know like for the path to be 1 heat interaction minus the path uh, 2 c 1 is equal to work interaction 2 b 1 minus work interaction 2 c 1. By rearranging this equation 3 
what we will do by this basically we will take this term to uh, this side and this term I can take to this side right. So, if I will do that what I will get I will get 2 d q minus d w for the path to b 1 is equal to d q minus d w 2 c 1 right. And this term if you look at d q minus d w you know uh, is uh, basically from this statement from this statement one can say that it is does not depend on the path that means, the q minus w for the path to be 1 is equal to q uh, d q minus d w for path to c 1. It is this term the uh, heat and minus uh, the work is basically this term is independent of the both processes to be 1 to c 1. And this is basically we can call it a point function or a property of the system right, because it uh, depends only on the initial and final step right. It does not depend what path it takes whether the path B between the state 1 and 2 or C or D whatever it is we of course, we have considered only 2 path. And these properties what we call is basically the internal energy right. And, and when we say that then we say that energy is a property of the system right, because this term we are saying d q minus d w is nothing but d e and d e is exact differential it does not depend on the path it depends on the point or rather it is a point function. So, it is a property and this equation you know if you look at you can apply very well for the what you call non cyclic process, non cyclic process right. Okay. And this you are aware okay. this is generally whenever you say that tell me the first law of thermodynamics will say that d q minus d w is equal to d e. What is the d e? d e is basically the total energy stored in a system like e will be consist of internal energy, kinetic energy and potential energy. And this is the microscopic form of energy we have discussed extensively on that right. Whereas, uh, U is the internal energy you know like whereas, the kinetic energy and potentially macroscopic form of energy right. So, uh, and most of the cases you know kinetic and potential energy are neglected because of being small therefore, you always say that you know d q minus d w you know if this uh, k e and uh, p e is small then I can write down basically d q minus d w is equal to d u, when k e is almost small very very negligible and p e right. So, we will be using this application and therefore, uh, what you call net change in energy is equal to net interaction between work and you know heat. So, therefore, energy interaction between system and uh, its surrounding can take place in through uh, two mode one is work interaction other is the heat interactions. So, uh, I have already talked about that let me again repeat that energy can be exchanged between system and surrounding by two ways either by the work or the heat. So, now let us look at for an isolated system like isolated system means we will take a very rigid uh, you know kind of a chamber where there is insulated this is insulated. Insulated means you know it insulates to such an extent that no heat will be going 
passing through the uh, its boundary right and there is no work done of course it is rigid and there is no other uh, you know sap to work and other things in this case there might be you know like pdv work or the boundary work and there might be also the sap to work or some other form of work like electrical uh, heating and other things but nothing is there so therefore dq and dw is equal to 0 so when dq and dw is 0 then first law of thermodynamic it turns out to be de is equal to 0 between you know state 1 and 2 so therefore the energy at state 1 is equal to energy at state 2 provided it is an isolated that means no interaction uh, you know like either work or the heat is taking place and this uh, you can state as energy remaining constant uh, and which we always say that energy can ni uh, neither be created nor be destroyed, but can be transferred from one form to another and that is valid only for an isolated system not for all system. Okay. So, that is the uh, you know principle of energy conservation which we will be using in several places you know like, like in your application we will be using that. And uh, as I told that macroscopic forms of energy is kinetic and potential energy which can be easily converted into work. In contrast the microscopic form of energy that is internal energy which is due to the molecular motion uh, cannot really be converted into work it is quite difficult to do that and that is why we will have to find out various ways and means of converting the internal energy into work. And generally the heat is being employed heat engine is being employed to convert the internal energy into work right. But what is a, a heat engine what do you mean by that heat engine is basically a cyclic device which absorbs the energy from its surrounding and does certain amount of work. That means, it has to absorb certain amount of uh, energy I mean either it can be heat or it can be any other form right and then does certain amount of work whether it does all the work I mean convert all the heat into that into the work or not that question need to be right uh, to be looked at. So, therefore, as it is cyclic device therefore, we can apply this d q uh, for the cyclic integral minus the d w is equal to 0 and d q is equal to the d w of course, the cycle this symbol is basically cyclic integral right. So, uh, if you look at is it really possible to have a engine heat engine which can absorb you know uh, certain amount of heat, but will not do any work. In other words is it possible that without absorbing any energy from its surrounding can we have a engine and that kind of imaginary cyclic operating device which would produce the work continuously without absorbing any heat from a surrounding is known as perpetual motion of machine of first kind right. You might not be remembering few years back there was a person uh, who is maybe a school dropout, but he was a what to call a technical nerd kind of things and then he started saying that he could uh, produce some kind of oil you know without really doing this was Raman Pillai his name you know and there is a lot of euphoria in this he could get something from the you know kind of this thing that is similar to that. Of course, if you look at this concept has been captured this uh, by the several people who try to work and till today also some people will be thinking look I can get energy you might be knowing that uh, the several uh, mystic people or the, the spiritual who they say look I will get a something out of nothing you know <laughs> like let us say I will get a one rasgulla out of nothing you know how it is possible. So, it is similar to that that means you do not have energy and you will start working 
for example, if I will not take food, can I work really? Yes, I may work for few hours, you might be knowing that several people like who go on fasting or still work, but those they use the stored energy which is there already in the body. Because if you go beyond maybe a month of fasting, you cannot really do much work, right. So, therefore, it is uh, what you call uh, violating, let us see how it is violating that. For example, if I say that there is a without any uh, observing, for example, like observing any heat, you need to absorb certain amount of heat and then some do some work that is a basically heat engine. Suppose, I say this is 0, then that is known as perpetual motion machine of first kind. If somebody of you know could do that, it will be great you know like we need not to do a lot of things right without absorbing energy. Now, is it possible to have a perpetual motion of uh, first kind or not? that what will you do? We will have to apply the first law of thermodynamics and say look whether it is possible or not, because the several device you will find people have you know put forward it or they are claiming that they are having a machine. If you look at your internet and you will find out like oh there are several of them you know even till today also some people will be trying, but it violates the first let us see how. Uh, why the perpetual motion machine of first kind is not possible uh, from the first law of thermodynamics. So, I say that uh, cycle integral of d q is equal to d w and if this is 0 right 0 that is saying that without absorbing any heat right from the surrounding then what will happen the work done will be 0. Okay work done will be 0 over a cycle. So, therefore, uh, you know uh, it is not really possible to have a perpetual motion of machine of first kind right. Let us look at other way around that means reverse that is the work being done on the system let us say there is a engine right by the surrounding and there is no heat being dissipated out like if you look at heat has to be dissipated out here. Whenever you know work is done some heat has to go out and if it is not then you know that is also not possible if it is 0. But let us uh, look at uh, you know some of the examples where you may think look I can have that you know like I can have a perpetual machine of So, um, uh, let me just tell you also that till date no such perpetual motion of first kind is created. Although there are several claims are being made by various people starting from the jewels onwards you know, but nobody is successful in doing that. So, let us consider a piston and cylinder kind of a arrangement where it contains let us say gas at pressure P 1 and V 1 and where P 1 is greater than the P naught. Okay, you can say that look let us have a latch here right which will stop I will remove this latch you know I will remove this latch right and then what will happen piston will go up or not piston will go up that means if I connect this piston to a rotary motion or something and then you know I can make it to rotate some work can be done right is it some work being done or not because if I put some weight right here and then it is going against that and then some work being done right piston can be moving up. Then can you call it as a uh, what you call because work being done you are not giving any heat are you giving any heat energy no, no but work being done can you call it as a perpetual motion of machine of first kind is it yes or no? See there is a gas is here at high pressure and then you will you know uh, and this is a lower pressure that whichever is acting as latch I will just remove it and then it will be expanded some work being done yes or no. Now, I have not given any uh, you know heat here that means this is a perpetual motion machine of first kind am I right or wrong? 
actually it is not because it is not cyclic process and this process will go on till it you know reaches equilibrium with the P naught, P 1 goes on decreasing till P naught. That means, where I am getting energy, the energy is stored here and that is being expanded and converted into the work right. And after that you cannot really come back to the original position. So, therefore, it cannot be. So, uh, and hence such a device is not a perpetual motion of machine of first kind. In summary, what I can say is that energy is a property of a system right that we have seen. Energy of an isolated system is conserved impossible to have a perpetual motion machine of first kind. That means, that you can do the work without absorbing any energy. Okay. So, therefore, uh, this is the things what we have seen. Let me uh, what you call just tell you that we have seen the first law of thermodynamic is applied for the what? For cyclic process, but however, we have learned that uh, derive an expression from the first law of thermodynamic for an which can be applied for non cyclic process that is d q minus d w is equal to d u or d e rather. Because if I say internal energy that means, it is basically change in kinetic change in potential energy is is negl or are negligible or almost equal to 0. So, therefore, uh, that equation is what we have uh, you know uh, we have derived that is d q minus d w is equal to d e. This is applied for non cyclic process. Right. So, therefore, this we will be using it for various uh, you know uh, problems to solve and other things that we will be discussing maybe in the next lecture. Thank you very much and uh, we will continue also maybe after this.